Hey, what's up? Like, totally time for 90210. Well, hello everyone. Welcome back to the 90210 show. My name is Mark. With me as always is my girlfriend, Carol. How are you doing, Carol? Hey, what's up? Not much. It's been a good week here at our little show. It is. <laughs> that's that's weird to you? Yes. Uh, what is it? It is May 5th. No, March. What in the hell? It I is, wish it was May 5th. It is March. Cinco de Mayo. It is March 15th. Let's get some margaritas. 1996. And no margaritas on 90210. No. Just eating addiction or eating disorder, 12 step programs or whatever she was in. I don't know. I mean, yeah. I, I don't know. I think she's going to be better now. Yeah. I think I, it's over. I think that, yeah, they don't, just like Brandon's probably cured too. Mm. Like, you know. He'll never gamble again. It's all, it's all just uh, fixed. Again, eating, eating disorder, something easily fixed in, in Beverly Hills. Right. Orange County, California, Beverly County, Los Angeles County, California is known for easily fixed mental problems. <laughs> you know what's terrible? Is it, Ivan. It's bit. What the fuck does that mean? <laughs> Ivan the Terrible. Uh huh. Um, <laughs> no, it's been more than like a whole day since we watched it. Mm hmm. And I literally remember almost nothing of what happened. Me too. Except, okay, I think the senior, like, pictures and voting about stuff was going on. Oh, my God. <laughs> senior awards, yes. Yeah, that thing. Jesus. <laughs> Didn't you get some uh, senior awards when you were uh, did, a senior? Did I? I don't know. I, th I believe you did. Am I still in high school? <laughs> we don't know. Yeah, I did. What What were they? Share. Uh, done most for the school. Aww. Most supportive. Aww. Easiest to talk to. Aww. What a sweetheart. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dating Mr. You're, Good Guy. You're a monster. <laughs> Come on, though. That's good. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. You're a good listener. I got laid a lot in high school. <laughs> <laughs> Did you? No. <laughs> but, but see, their loss is my gain. Yeah. What did you win? What awards did you win? I didn't. No, oh, you didn't win any awards? No. Did they give away awards? I don't know. Hmm. I don't okay. care. I didn't pay attention to that shit. You actually won several awards. You just didn't know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Miss uh, Anti-Congeniality? I don't know. <laughs> Is there such a thing? Miss Anti-Coagulation. <laughs> also known as... Hemophilia. Yeah, Miss Hemophilia. <laughs> 1996. <laughs> Carol. Well, uh, Kelly. Yes. Gets most beautiful. She does. She wins most beautiful. And Dylan, her boyfriend, wins most handsome. I think that's funny. Like, Do you think is it the like, most handsome? Is it like prom king and queen? Like, it has to go in a pair? What if they weren't dating? No, I don't think it has to go in a pair. It just happened to. The, the most beautiful people found each other. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what a great uh, Beverly Hills success story. Right. <laughs> They've been through so many struggles. Glad they found each other. I don't think he is the most handsome, though. Yeah, I don't think so. Either. I mean, he's a nice looking guy, but he has a particular look. Yeah, like that, like bad boy James Dean kind of look. Not, yeah. not handsome. Right. Brandon's handsome. You think Brandon should have won handsomest? Maybe. I think he's the most handsome out of all the dudes. Donna won most naive. That's hilarious. Somehow. Most talented went to, what's his name, David Silver, even though he's technically not a senior. He's just in their class now. 
Well, I mean, he kind of is a senior. He's going to graduate with them. He's like between junior and senior. But he's taking extra classes to do it. He's not officially. He can't officially yeah, be a kind, senior. He's kind of like skipping his senior year. Yeah. And riding on the coattails of theirs. That's sucky. <laughs> yep. Aw, poor David. Poor them too, though. They don't get to. They don't. They don't get to get away from him for a year. <laughs> Why would they want to? He's not a bad dude. Nah, he's fine. Till he's, you know, fucking some other girl behind on his back. Yeah. Then he's a bad dude. Well, she also got most naive, so that makes sense. Right? She well, didn't know. Just like when she forgave him for cheating on her. Mm-hmm. Like, you were just setting yourself up, Donna. Yeah. You deserve better, Donna, but you won't get better because that's the way the show's right? written. Didn't she get something else, too? Naive and something AIDS. else? Um, what the fuck? Way to take it dark. She got she got that card. Hello, AIDS. <laughs> Hello, AIDS. Can you picture her and Telly together? Oh, God, no. That would just not happen. She is a virgin. She <laughs> is. Yeah, she is exactly his type. I think, you, I think you'd love it, Donna. <laughs> I think it'd make you feel really good. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> She got something else, yeah. Nicest or something? Might, might have been something like that, yeah. And... Brandon got most likely to succeed. <laughs> to succeed? So did Andrea. Wow. Wow. That's gross. Okay. Um, Andrea got... Yeah. They both did? Yes. They did a male and female... Yes, they did. <laughs> what? You really followed this episode closely, did you? I'm telling you, if we wait more than 24 hours, it just leaves my brain. No. So, yeah. So. <laughs> yep. So, yeah. So. <laughs> With the seed and everything. That's, um, that's like the beginning of a sewing contest. That's how they start. Sure. So, yeah. So. <laughs> Kelly wants to take pictures with uh, Dylan all dressed up. And Dylan doesn't want to get his picture taken at in all. A tuxedo. He wants to go in a paper bag. Yeah. Like what a, a dick. Like a Lions fan. <laughs> like, he doesn't deserve an award. Okay. So, Jeez. <laughs> well, I just think it's kind of shitty. It's like, you know, your classmates are trying to, like, honor you, and you're going to be like, fuck this, I'm going to wear a paper bag over my head to prove it doesn't matter. Well, yeah, like I said, there's, there's... It's one thing to not care, but the other thing to go out of your way to let everyone know you don't care. Mm-hmm. That's that the, he's got something. There's something there. Yeah, he doesn't just not care. He cares so much. He wants everyone to know he doesn't care. Right. But she talks him into dressing up like Fred Astaire. Yeah, and he and she dresses up like I don't know her mother. Kind of, yeah. She's wearing her mother's dress, and then her mother does her makeover, so. She's like, Mom, what's this white powder? Oh. (laughs) Just brush this off. Wow. And when her mom is helping her get all ready, Mm -hmm. she says some fucked up shit to her. (laughs) She does. She says, oh, you're just like me. Pale as a ghost. No eyelashes. Yeah. So you need that mascara. Why don't you put your hair up? Remember how we like to put your hair up? And then she was talking about like what her best angle was. You know, it's mm-hmm. important for a model to know, like as though Kelly's a mo- Kelly's not a model, right? I mean, she certainly could be. It's weird though. Here's some heroin and, and alcohol. Tra- 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 treating you like a model, right? What else is going on in this episode? Let's just talk about Kelly for now, okay? Don't get too ambitious over here. You don't remember either. No, I said I didn't. <laughs> but we'll get there. Okay. It's mostly Kelly. It is mostly Kelly. So she and goes Dylan. to the she goes to the the picture taking and she's all mad. Because everything. yeah, because her mom made her feel like shit. And then she finds out Andrea says to her, "Oh, you know, uh she says something like oh, she's talking to her about Dylan. She's like, I don't think Dylan cares that much about me or whatever. She says something like that. And Andrea's like, oh, to read a story, he sure thinks about you. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. And he won't let Kelly read it. Yeah, he wrote, he's continuing to write that essay about his dad, I guess, and his life. 
It's it's more about his life now. It's just ballooned into his own biography. Yeah, something that it wasn't intended to be. It was supposed to be some stupid little article in the paper so they could submit it to try to win an award. And now it's he's taking it into some other direction. Yeah, he's trying to write like a book now. But anyway, so she says that, and then Kelly's all pissed. Well, yeah, because he like trusts Andrea more than he trusts her. Well, in in his defense, though. Andrea is going to be the one editing it for him. Right. So the editor really should be the first person to see it. Yeah, I guess. But still, if she she's his girlfriend. Like, if you write something, I would expect that I'd get to look at it before an editor. Yeah, okay, I can see that. So on top of her mom making all those stupid remarks and then finding out that Dylan let Andrea read his stuff, Kelly just has, like, a little nervous breakdown. Mm-hmm. She's like, fuck it, I don't want to do this anymore. Yeah. I'm not going to take this picture. The photographer's like this eighth grade kid. McKay, <laughs> it's your turn. Where are you going, buddy? <laughs> yeah, he wore a top hat. Yes. He can't help but, like, make a spectacle tips. of himself. Yeah. Because first it was going to be a paper bag. Mm-hmm. Now it's a fucking top hat. Yeah. I don't. He's going to write a paper bag that said celebrity on it put that over his head. <laughs> I'm just not, I'm not loving Dylan right now. He's, he's kind of. Well, he's not acting like much of a boyfriend either because she keeps, Kelly keeps bringing stuff up. She's just gone through this thing where she was in the hospital and she's overdosing on diet pills and stuff like that. She's obviously in an emotionally fragile state. Right. And Dylan's just like, yeah, whatever, Kelly, I don't care. Yeah. And he's like, oh, I like having sex with you, basically, is what he says <laughs> at one point in this episode. There was more more than that. She Look, kissing too, he said. <laughs> no, I mean like she's kind of accusing him of only caring about her for that and he's trying to That's convince later. her otherwise. That's later. Okay. That happens later. Okay. Later. Yep. Cool. So she goes home after never more than twenty four hours. No. <laughs> Your brain just turns to mush. It already is mush. It gets slightly more solid with the facts of Beverly Hills 90210, and then they slide back out. You got one of the smoothest brains around. <laughs> Anyways, um, Kelly goes home and yells at her mother mm-hmm. and blames her for everything. Well, blames her for being obsessed with looks and stuff like that. Even when she was talking about her looks, when she was getting dressed, I'm like, I, maybe not the best thing to be saying to someone that just left a facility for an eating disorder. Right. Like, I thought it was dumb already. Well, and apparently, I mean, listening to Kelly, like, Kelly has some really good points. I mean, her mother put her on Jenny Craig when she was, like, mm-hmm. 10 or something. Yeah. And then paid for her to have a nose job when she was 14 mm-hmm. or 15? 16. Mm, 15. Yeah. 15, she said, yeah. Who does that? Like, what parent says, hey, you need a nose job? Mrs. Uh, Kelly's mom. I can't remember Kelly's <laughs> last name. Taylor. Mrs. Taylor. Ann Taylor. So it's no wonder that Kelly's a little uh, messed up. And her dad won't ever talk to her. Yeah. So she goes off on mom, and then she just takes off in still wearing this dress. This yeah. dress that she's so thin, I'm surprised, is staying on her body because it has no straps. Okay. It's a sleeveless, strapless gown. That's only held up by her breasts and a zipper. I just, I don't think that should be the choice of someone that thin. Okay, sounds good. <laughs> what? <laughs> well, I mean, aren't you, when you're watching her, like, aren't you kind of half waiting for it to fall off? No. I I was. It does not occur to me. <laughs> oh, that sounds like just a fantasy of yours. <laughs> but the fashion doesn't, I, I don't. Pay much attention to that. It's like it's like Jessica Rabbit's dress, but she's not built like Jessica Rabbit. Okay. Uh, okay. Sounds good. Fuck you. I can't comment. What do you want me to say to this? <laughs> Something. I. Uh, yes, it looks a little like Jessica Rabbit's dress. It's not red or sequined, but. It's sleeveless oh. with a sweetheart neckline. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. <laughs> see that's you're talking to somebody 
that doesn't understand these terms or know anything about fashion. All right, well, ladies, just trust me on this. The dress was about to fall off because she's a skeleton right now. Okay. And then at some point in this episode or the last episode, her and Dylan were talking about when they were in kindergarten together. They're always talking about kindergarten. It's weird. It's like the best time of their lives or something. (laughs) Remember in first grade when I felt you up, he says, or something? I don't know. Well, you know, my nephew is obsessed with a girl that he met in kindergarten. That's true. Like, he's in fifth grade, and he still talks about her. Yeah. It's weird. It Wouldn't it be really cool, though, if they, like, do meet again when they're older? Him and Kelly Taylor? No. Or whatever her name was. The girl. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. It would be cool, yes. (laughs) Kelly and Dylan, though. They're, like, reminiscing always about how they were in kindergarten together. So he realizes somehow that the playground at their old elementary school is where she went. Where she spent most of her days. (laughs) Okay. Shooting b-ball outside of the school. (laughs) I I don't think that it was that obvious that that's where she went. Not to us. I don't, I, I just, I, I don't think that it's realistic. They're trying to establish that they've got some sort of deep connection between them. But they don't. But they're don't. doing it in the most ham-fisted way possible. Yeah. It's not obvious. It's not good. I don't like it. So, yeah, he, he, he goes to the playground. She's there sitting on the swing. He says, oh, I remember you used to, I used to push you on the swing. Which is weird for one child to push another child, but whatever. No, it's not. Yes, it is. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Just decided to make that my line. Okay. Um, and she says, yeah, just so you could look at my dress. And he says, no, never. Because, <laughs> yeah, no little boy looks up a little girl's dress. No, nope, never happens. So she's, he says, like. They're looking for the penis. What? They're looking for the penis. What are you talking about? They're trying to confirm that there isn't a penis. What? (laughs) What the fuck does that mean? (laughs) What are you talking about? (laughs) They're looking for something they hope is never there. (laughs) The motivation of a little boy to look up a little girl's dress. (laughs) <laughs> you know you don't just say that like like that's common knowledge like we all just know that if you got that out of some fucking Freudian <laughs> book or something like that then you need to explain that oh. you can't just be like of course that's like saying the sky's blue <laughs> little boys look for the penis <laughs> what are you talking about I don't know okay <laughs> Wow. You were saying. I don't know anymore. You've successfully turned my brain into yours. Because I have no fucking clue. Oh, it hurts to laugh. Okay. So, he says... He's like, oh, we're, we were both the outcasts when we were kids or whatever. We both had to walk home because our parents forgot to pick us up and all this shit. So we're the same. That's why we're soulmates, he says, because you're both cast off. So that's, that's a real, real inspiring story there, Dylan. Well, I mean, yeah, he's saying they both had it hard and they had to grow up too, too soon. Mm-hmm. And, you know, maybe they need to take care of each other. He said that... I don't care if you sleep with me. I, I I value your opinions. We don't have to have sex. I still want to be with you. Blah, blah, blah. Like all this stuff. Yeah. And then she says, hey, you said that, uh, you know, if we didn't have sex, that, that would be okay. And he's like, nah, I don't know. It doesn't sound like something I'd say. <laughs> That's kind of funny. It was, it was a slightly humorous line, yeah. But so they, they, you know, they're good now, I guess. They'll be good for a while. Yeah. He do, he still he doesn't really act like her boyfriend. No, he's a terrible boyfriend. He wasn't a terrible boyfriend to Brenda. No. So, yeah, I really feel like there's something missing here with Kelly. The penis. 
<laughs> it's not up the skirt. Right. It's what's missing. <laughs> uh, he's going to get back together as Brenda. Yeah, eventually. We know that, but not for a couple of years. We don't know that. Okay, that's true. We know that they're going to break up. Yeah. Because they break up in the season finale of the season before the season that's running now. The one we started watching in 1994. Yeah. <laughs> they broke up there, and I assume he goes back to Brenda. Because they still obviously have something between the two of them. Yes. But we'll see. Could be back with her now. We don't know because we're not watching the current uh, stuff. Yeah, we got to get caught up. We're almost there, aren't we? No, not even close. Uh, we're like two years away. Aw. <laughs> we're like two years behind, basically. But here's the thing. We talked about several episodes. So I think what I'm going to do is just I'm going to release those themselves as tapes. Mm-hmm. And... I might just release them all, like, in one week, like, on the same day or something like that. Be like, bang, 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 here you go. Yeah. Anybody who missed them, catch up. Yeah. And then the next week we'll move on so we don't do redo those episodes. Right. So that, that'll that'll help us catch up. Well, that's what I meant. We are going to be able to... We're almost to that point, yes. Yeah. Next season. Cool. The end of next season of the show. So next season, we should be caught up. No, because the show didn't pause when we decided to stop watching it and Mm -hmm. go back. It's continually ran (laughs) as we've been going back and watching the old episodes. So it's now like two years past where we were. Okay. It's so confusing, but okay. (laughs) I understand, okay? I understand that, like... We're like two years behind, but one of those years we already made tapes for, so really we're only like one year behind. We didn't do the whole year. I think we did. No, we didn't. We did like seven episodes. You keep saying that, but... But I'm correct. (laughs) I mean, you can can imagine to yourself that we did them, but we didn't. Okay. All right. Anyway, so speaking of imagining, I feel like... Steve imagined this entire scenario. He's got tickets to the Lakers. Oh yeah. And he wants he he wants to go with Brandon. Although Brand you know, he's like, I don't know, should you go to the basketball game, Brandon? Right. Ha uh-huh. ha. He's like, Yeah, it's fine. He's like, We're in the no gambling section. I'll beat the fuck out of you if you gamble, he says. And he says, But we need two girls to go with. So you, Brandon, will find us two women to go with and bring some rubbers. Yeah, we're gonna fuck them. Well, yeah, except he says he's feeling lucky because he's not gross, right? Oh, he's not. Well, okay, he is. <laughs> he actually pretty much is. Harry Grant's uh, daughter hasn't gotten back to him apparently. That's sad. After their one date, so I liked her. Yeah, well, her mom's in this episode. Diane Cannon. Weird. It is weird. They're just hanging around the set of now to know these people. But it's not, it's not, I mean, it's her, but it's, she's not there. Like, this is a shitty little set of bleachers that they're filming at, and then they insert shots, like stock footage of the Lakers games. Oh, okay. They're not actually at a Lakers game. It's very obvious. But they go to, they're, they want to go to the Lakers game, so... Brandon's trying to find somebody, find women to go with, and he talks to this one girl, and she's like, I fucking hate Steve. There's <laughs> lots of bad blood. And he's like, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't know. Right. And yeah, she was all about Brandon. So he's all frustrated, and his dad comes in late from work, as always, and he says, yeah, I'm trying to get some girls to go with us to the Lakers game. Uh, pretty soon I'm going to be asking you guys or something like that. And Brandon's dad's like, oh, my gosh, that means so much to me. So, right, like an idiot. Me and mom would love to go. And Cindy comes up and she's like, I love the Lakers. Let's go. Yeah. He's like, you know, it's tax season and I really don't have the time. And then Brandon's like, that's okay, dad. He's like, but I'll make the time for you, son. So he has to tell Steve that he accidentally invited his, his mom and his dad. With tickets that Steve bought. And Steve does not want to sit next to Brandon's mom. What is up with that? I think it's because he thinks that she'll ask a lot of questions about the game, but I I think that it's it's like very under the radar that he hates her. <laughs> wow. I think he just hates Cindy. That's so weird. She's so nice. I don't think he's I don't think he's about her. 
what what did she ever do to him? She's not famous enough. I want to ask him. I, w- I want to ask Steve Sanders why. Why do you hate Cindy? Ian Ziering. He can't Ian, answer me. Ian Ziering, if you're out there, why don't you get a hold of us and tell us why Steve Sanders hates Cindy? Or, you know, the people that write the show. That could work, too. Yeah, fuck you guys. <laughs> anyway, so they go to the Lakers game, and the guy, usher comes by, and he's like, hey, you got this seat. You're supposed to shoot a basket for $10,000 half-court shot, and Steve's got the ticket. Yeah. Woohoo! <laughs> It's weird they go through this whole thing. Like, did they have to fill in time on this episode? Yeah. Because it's like, at first no, it no, was... No, 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 no. They didn't have to fill in time. This has a payoff. A very clear payoff. Okay. Because earlier, one of the very first things that happens is Steve's book has been defaced in detention. Right. And he's such a little fucking prep that he's... Uh, upset about it. Brandon, they ruined my book. <laughs> I'm going to talk to Miss Teasley. <laughs> so he goes to the principal's office and she's like, oh, the Avarado Street School, elementary school or whatever. Oh, yeah, we don't have the budget this year. I'm sorry. And she hangs up the phone. She's like, hey, Steve, remember that, uh, that Avarado Street? And he's like, yeah, the place where I saw the fucking truck uh, phase through <laughs> because of Angels. Right. Angels are real. And he just starts screaming about it over and over again. But no, he doesn't mention any of that because why? This doesn't make any sense. It still <laughs> uh, angers me. It's infuriating. But he says, oh, yeah, I loved playing Santa for those kids. And they're like, well, we're not going to have the summer camp this year because we don't have money. Yeah. And so then he wins. this. Like He, he gets to shoot the shot. He shoots it in the stupidest way possible. Where it's like he's shot putting the uh, the basketball or something. But because of the best editing software that 1993 has to offer. And because of the angels. Yeah, the angels are. That's right. We should have heard. That's We should have. We should have heard the, well, we're going to help Steve Sid this year, bro. Right? <laughs> oh, yeah. So it goes in and he wins $10,000. And he's like, ah, I'm going to blow this on cocaine and hookers. And they go to the peach pit. He's like, Nat. Your finest plate of your co- finest cocaine and <laughs> oh, God. the phone number to all the hookers. All the bent spoons. <laughs> and they're like, oh, you're never going to remember what you blow this on and everything like that. And they're all, oh, the rich get richer and everyone's. And then he's like, oh, I know. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to spend it all in one place. And then he gets that creepy fucking smile on his face. <laughs> and then, like, just to hit it over the head. It's like the very next scene. Right. They cut to Mrs. Teasley being saying to Andrea, guess what? You, uh, you're going to have your job as a counselor back. Somebody dropped a check off of $10,000 for the Avarado Street summer camp specifically. And they're like, who was it? And she's like, oh, it's an anonymous donor. She's like, oh, you hear about these, these just very great people in the world. Just the best kind of person. And they're like, well, who would it, could it be? And they're like, and somebody who has $10,000. Steve's like talking very animatedly behind them, like framed between them as they're right. talking. It's like, yeah, we, we get it, Orson Welles. We understand. <laughs> but he, uh, and then they look at him and they're sort of like, nah. And it's like, yes, obviously it's him. Right. Obviously it was him, but it's telling that he's such a scumbag. Right. <laughs> that they, that even with all that evidence, they're like, nah, it couldn't be. Never. Steve Sanders could never do anything nice. He's a lot nicer than they give him credit for. Yeah, behind the scenes. But he still does some really douchey things. He presents himself in a very bad way. Yeah. Almost like he does it on purpose, though. Yeah, it's a defense mechanism. Why? I don't know. I just made that up. Let people in, Steve. It's kind of like you made up uh, boys looking for penises. (laughs) I did. No, you know what? I'm really stonewalling because I was a little boy, too. We All the little boys know this. It's called the great penis hunt. <laughs> We're looking for the one little girl that has a penis. <laughs> Jesus. The hermaphroditic girls out there. Oh, my God. I was just thinking about, 
like how little kids. Don't <laughs> explain the full process. <laughs> There's no need to explain. <laughs> We've all been there, Carol. It's like in kindergarten cop. Yep. Boys have a penis and girls have a vagina. You would think if they knew that, they would stop looking for it. <laughs> but they want to confirm the reality that they've only heard about. <laughs> they want proof. Every, every little boy is a scientist out there. It's a skeptic. <laughs> They're all Rene Descartes out there. I cannot prove this. <laughs> that what I've heard is true. They've all got my era, not microscopes. They've all got monocles. No, the fuck you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I don't. Magnifying the glasses. Spy glasses. Yeah, <laughs> they've all got magnifying glasses and and deer stalker hats. I'm just papers. picturing a bunch of little boys with monocles <laughs> looking up skirts. <laughs> Buddy. <laughs> What a what a fine day, isn't it? Isn't it Reginald? No penises today, only vaginas. They're all God. smoking big cigars. <laughs> We're gonna end up on a list. <clears throat> oh my goodness. Anyway. So Brenda. Brenda. We haven't talked well, about Brenda. That's right, Brenda was doing stuff this Her episode. tiny little not even a B plot thing. Mm-hmm. She wants to apply to Minnesota State University or whatever. I think it's just the University of Minnesota. Whatever. Minnesota State University sucks <laughs> if it exists. Some school in Minnesota. The Minnesota Screaming Eagles, where where Coach Hayden Fox coaches the uh, <laughs> the football team. No, the University of Minnesota, aka. Do you know what they're they're Do you know what they are? Hmm. You know no. how like you know how like the University of Michigan where we live is are the Wolverines. Do you, mm-hmm. know, do you know what Minnesota is? No. They are the Golden Gophers. Wow, <laughs> that's sad. <laughs> we have gophers here in Michigan. That's true. The Wolverines eat them all. <laughs> wow. Fuck you, gophers! But we're golden. <laughs> they say. But she misses her friends yeah. back in Minnesota. She feels like she doesn't have any real friends here because she didn't win any awards. <laughs> She's very upset about that. Her and Steve both. Yeah. They're both losers. That's right. They don't get dolls. She doesn't even get $10,000 like Steve. No. Nope. Bre- Brenda does have a doll. If we were going on dolls, it should have been Steve and Andrea. Steve and Andrea don't get anything. <laughs> No, but yeah, she she is upset she didn't get any awards. She's like, oh, it's always people that knew each other since when they were little kids and stuff like that. And she she's all upset about it. Yeah. So she has filled out her application, but they require a $50 deposit for out-of-state applications. Right. And she doesn't have it. And she hasn't told her parents. So she asked Brandon if he, if he has $50 she can borrow. And he's like, all I got is 10 and she grabs it. Yeah. She's like, sorry, I need 50, though. <laughs> yeah, she's a little uh, not nice. So she has to talk to her dad, makes them late for the game. Yeah, that's the other thing. Like, fucking Brenda pulls Jim up there. Jim pulls Cindy up there. Steve's waiting for these people he doesn't even want to take in the first place to go to the mm-hmm. game that he's paying for. Yeah. He should have just fucking walked out. Stop and pick up some hookers on the way or something. <laughs> If he did that, he could drive in the uh, the diamond lane, in the carpool lane. Right, right. <laughs> but, yeah, she convinces them to give her the money. It's not even hard, I don't think, because they're not upset with her. No, but she's like, oh, you know, I, like they're, they're, they have some weird parent plot where they're like, I'm, I'm sad that you guys can't come to us about your problems. Right. And at some point, Brandon tells Jim about his gambling. Mm-hmm. He's like, oh, you can't trust me either. Yeah. It's like, yeah, Jim, you're kind of a dick. Have you not noticed? <laughs> you drove Dylan out. Yeah, well, Dylan's not blood. <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs> Poor Dylan. Yeah. He, he has no blood. Nope. <laughs> he does have a penis, though. <laughs> Kelly, Kelly can attest to that. <laughs> 
Anyway, so that's pretty much it. That's pretty much everything that happens. It is. That was this week's episode. Yeah. Quite a quite a thrill ride, huh? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about the direction this is going? I know that eventually they're going to make it to college and it will be a little bit better. They're wrapping up a lot of these storylines because they're about to be done with this season. Yeah. So. They need to get done. I am anxious to see their first year in college, though. Yeah, that's the 94. That was that was the first year that we did. No, we didn't yes. see that. We didn't see them first go to college. They'd but, already been there. But it's that season, Carol. So, the one you think we did the whole thing of. <laughs> that's the season. So you're telling me they're freshmen in college in that season that we yes, were watching. Correct. I don't know. Why? What don't? Why? What? What, <laughs> what don't you know about it? Because there's a thing that happened with Steve and that girl. Maybe that happened earlier in the year. I guess. Maybe it happens at the end of this year. I guess. We'll have to see. Maybe you just remembered it wrong. Maybe. That is entirely possible. I mean, you couldn't even remember this episode we watched two days ago. (laughs) You're right. I should stop trying to remember something we watched two years ago. All right. Anyway, that is our episode for the week. Carol, if you can remember, tell everyone with penises (laughs) and everyone looking for penises that don't have penises about what they need to do. <laughs> well, if you go to our website, www.retrolatefee.com, you will not find penises or vaginas. I'm well, really sorry. But if you use a magnifying glass, <laughs> you may find a special one in the corner or something. Oh my, what are you going to do to our website tonight? I'm just <laughs> No, um, check it out, though, because we've got some interesting things on there, including Mm -hmm. uh, information about our contest. Yes, that's right. If you want to win some some stuff, some money, you you need to sign up at our Patreon at patreon.com slash retro life. And then you can maybe win the stuff. Yeah, it's it's hundreds of, do- of dollars. <laughs> hundreds? Hundreds of dollars worth Hundred. of prizes. Hundreds? Hundreds of dollars worth of prizes. Okay, okay. Are up for grabs. Hundreds. Hundreds. <laughs> Anyways, um, what else? Website. Fuck, you <laughs> forgot this? Do this every week? Write us at latefee1994 at awol.com. Uh-huh. And that's it. Tell a friend about the show. That too. Tell a friend and tell them. They're have, beautiful. Do you have a penis? <laughs> if so, go listen to these tapes. Don't talk about your friend's penises. It's not the way if to you live get your caught life. Looking up someone's skirt. Don't say mention I, us. Say I was looking for. I was looking to see if you listened to. <laughs> Retro <the show>. lady. <laughs> All right, we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.